My name is Leslie Linball, though in the online world I'm known as 1% Yellow. This video was created for Dr. Alec Koros' ECI831 class and reflects my attempt to become a social artist. Through this project, I hope to connect individuals from my undergraduate university, the Augustana campus of the University of Alberta, with individuals from the University of Mary Washington who are exploring the possibilities for liberal arts education online. The point of contact between these two schools is their mutual membership in the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges, or COPELAC. The digital world is a space that has increasing significance in our lives. Actively engaging this space from an academic perspective is an important step for universities to take, but the liberal arts model provides a unique set of challenges to this move. In this video, we will hear some of the first thoughts on online liberal arts education. This stuff about technology, and I teach, I teach uh, uh, technology in the environment, and this isn't a huge part of the course, but one of the things I always want to point out to people is technology isn't something separate from us. Technology is something that is very, very human and, in fact, has no meaning apart from us. It's, it is the, the real world, but it's a whole different form of interaction. It's a, probably a new form of human interaction that we're not quite used to dealing with yet. So we have to figure out, so we have to understand, so we have to study for its own sake. I think this is a perfect time for this initiative because technology has kind of framed a new way of thinking about um, social relationships that maybe 15, 10 years ago weren't possible. And that's cool. And then my last question is, what are some of your first impressions of liberal arts being delivered in an online classroom? What are some of the opportunities that you see in that as well as some of the challenges that you can identify? What I'd probably see about it first is I'd be worried about the challenges. It's that it's easy to be impersonal online. For many people, the online courses, the distance education situation is very cold, is very, like, very lonely. The point is that I'm still isolated in, without actual face-to-face -face time. If we're going to have community, active learning, and, uh, and interactions, we still need that face-to-face -face time. It's scary to actually answer questions such as how can you build community online uh, in the abstract. I think for me it's really important that one looks at what the non-online, the real world or whatever you want to call it, component to the educational, the overall educational experience that one's trying to create. For me that's an important piece, uh, a caveat to the whole conversation. Be mindful of its own limitations and not to say that this is the be all and end all and this is the way of the future because I think there's value to having community in a face-to-face way as well. I don't see this as an either or thing. M my ideal situation is still probably a blended course. Most faculty, even at our school, um, don't believe in online learning. For me, the, the digital was much narrower in terms of the kind of engagement I had. But of course, if you drill down into what they're thinking, they're comparing the best contexts for face-to-face -face learning with the worst contexts for online learning. You know, it's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison because they never really thought that much about it. Well, it's just something that uh, hasn't quite cut up um, to academic standards. It's something that, uh, unfortunately, not, not seen as something that's as serious as the kind of education you would get in class and the kind of publications that we get in print. What looks like to be good information, but they're just on a rant. So students are challenged to be more, more and more critical in their processing. For Sarah Ross, the tangents students take in online forums can be irritating. Keeping students on topic is a key role for instructors. You give a lot of rope to people and it works for some and it, other people, they don't know what the hell to deal with it. But, but I think not knowing what to deal with it is part of what I'm helping them with. So maybe, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> The broadband has not rolled out to the point that sort of Web 2.0 could actually do stuff for uh, rural just yet. The, oppor the opportunities are many. I, I think prior to having this positive Twitter experience that I was explaining, I would have been much more hesitant about the idea because I think a lot of the value of liberal arts comes from these face-to-face -face interactions, but the more I'm learning about the value of 
um, social media and online interactions, the more I could see them, uh, liberal arts and an online setting working well together. Well, I think the whole Web 2.0 thing uh, is really uh, what's made the, the, the biggest difference. Uh, because it's not just chat, because it's not just posting things on a, on a news group or bulletin board um, that uh, allow us to do new things that, um, uh, frankly, I haven't really come up with yet. <laughs> I, I'm not objective here. I think that there's great potential for um, enhancing liberal education by doing at least some of it online. Um, part of the reason is because I think there are digital tools that can do a better job in some contexts. It, it makes a larger conversation. It makes a, you're interacting uh, with this cloud of, of people from anywhere. And I saw the potential to really um, bridge and create community amongst, amongst folks that were isolated uh, and couldn't come, wouldn't have been able to attend classes in a physical, in a physical place. It can be done and the social networking framework suggests that liberal arts online is just us actually engaging what's already there and bringing it to the classroom and opening it up and making interaction a part and parcel of what we do. And that actually gets at another really important aspect of this, which is that um, I don't think you can be genuinely interested in blogging without at some point having sort of your crisis as a writer about who is my audience. Like, why am I doing this? Who am I speaking to? What is my voice? Those are questions which we as educators should be dying to have with students. But there's a way in which, you know, you can have students journal in class, you can have them turn in a paper to you, you can have them do some peer review. But when you have them publish it online and it becomes public and anybody could potentially find them through a Google search, these questions about voice and audience and purpose become explicit in really interesting, important ways. So why don't we use that as a mechanism for learning? So we don't have to wait for studies to do any of this. We need, we need to just get in there and, and try it um, uh, and um, see what, what works. The Online Learning Initiative is the University of Mary Washington's attempt to do as Jerome says, get in there and see what's possible. The next video will introduce some of the work being done at the University of Mary Washington as they attempt a values-based approach to online learning.